Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a scroll unrolling in Blender. We're going to be using some cloth physics to do this. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be primarily covering just how to model this and um, simulate it. And then you can go ahead and get your own kind of you know image you want to project onto it. I'll kind of cover that as well. Um, but it's up to you to find one that you like and then just you know add a little basic scene like this with a camera. Very simple thing. I hope you guys enjoy this and I'll up be uploading this final result as well to my Patreon. You can check all of that out in the description. So let's jump in. So with a new scene opened up in a Blender, we're gonna go ahead, select all the default objects and press delete. We're then gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a mesh object. Let's go for cylinder. And with the cylinder active, let's tab into edit mode and inside of edit mode with everything active, we're gonna go S.1. So S.1 and then hit enter. And then you're going to go RX90 and hit enter. So RX90. So now in our front view, we should see this and it's 10 times smaller. We're then going to go into our topographic view. And in our top view, with everything still active, we're going to go SY22 and we're going to hit enter. So SY22. And now let's quickly go and select these end faces. So this face here and this face here. And now you can go Control B and create a bevel and then roll the middle mouse button just to add in some segments. So something like this. Tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. So now we have our rod. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go, um, let's just leave it where it is now. We're gonna go ahead and let's go shift A. Let's add in a curve, add in a Bezier curve. And in our front orthographic view, we're gonna tab into edit mode of that curve selected and we're gonna press A make sure it's all selected and we're gonna go delete. So we're deleting the vertices in edit mode. Make sure it's in edit mode. Because while we're in edit mode now, we can actually come in here and let's grab this draw tool here. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna come right over here and we're gonna draw roughly like this. Go around and then go around again, like so, and then stop right here, like that. Now we can go here and go to our move tool and let's just grab these handles and we can just kind of move them and adjust them to get it looking nice. Now remember, this doesn't have to be perfect because in real life, a rolled up piece of paper wouldn't be perfect, right? So just keep it really simple. Just kind of adjust these handles like so. And let's bring this here. Okay, looks good. Something like this. And then we're gonna press A to select all of it. We're gonna go G and just move it up till it's sitting on the floor here. We're gonna bring it over to the side like this, okay, so something like that. And then we're just gonna grab this handle here, we're gonna go E to extrude and X, and extrude it along the X, till it roughly comes to the middle here. And then we're gonna tab back out, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go F3, we're gonna type in convert, and we're gonna convert this to a mesh. Now if we tab into edit mode, and we go to our vertex select option, is we're gonna make sure everything is selected, we're gonna type in F3, and we're gonna type in here, unsub, so unsubdivide, click on it, and then come here and then you can just kind of unsubdivide it a little bit. So I'm gonna go with about this much. And then I'm just gonna come down here where it's really dense and just select every other one and go X and just dissolve. So just dissolving those verts. So we have something much lower um, poly like this. And then we're gonna press A to select everything, E to extrude and X or Y. So E to extrude and Y, extrude along the Y. And then let's grab this vertex over here or these, this edge over here. We're just gonna go, zooming in here, we're gonna go G, X, and move it in closer to the origin point here. And let's go to our modifiers. Let's give this a mirror modifier. And let's enable clipping, and let's go G, X, and move it along till it clips over here with this one over here. Then we're gonna press A to select everything. We're gonna go S, Y, scale it along the Y, make it about this wide. And then let's go to our top view, and let's go G, Y, and move it this way till it's kind of in the middle of this um, bar we have here. And then we're gonna tab back out. We're gonna grab this bar. We're gonna go G and move it right over here, like so. Okay, and we're gonna right click and go shade smooth. In fact, let's grab the scroll, right click and go shade smooth. And then let's grab this rod in our front view. Shift D to duplicate and X and move one over here, like so. So now what we can do, we can go Shift A. Let's add in a plane, S to scale it up, like so. And let's go Control A and apply the scale. And we wanna make sure with this scroll over here that we selected, go into edit mode, select everything, let's go G, Z, and just make sure it's sitting on top of this plane here. That's really important that we do that. So now if we grab these rods, let's grab this rod over here, let's give that a 
collision. Let's grab this rod, give it a collision. And then let's grab our floor, give that a collision. And then let's grab our scroll, give that a cloth. Now let's come all the way down to collision and enable self collision. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we can see our cloth kind of just folds like that, which is exactly what we want. So what we need to do now is we need to actually select these bars and let's go into our front orthographic view. Let's enable auto King and let's select both of these bars. And on frame one, we're going to press I and we're going to insert a location keyframe. Then we're going to come up to frame 80 and on frame 80, we're going to grab this guy. We're going to go G X and move it over a little bit like so. And then let's grab this guy and go G X and move him over a little bit. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same because it just adds a little bit of randomness to it. So we're just going to eye it. Let's turn that off. Let's come here and make it 100 frames. And now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we can see this is what we have. How cool is that? So now we can do a few extra things. We can actually grab our paper. Let's give it a subdivision surface modifier. In fact, I'm going to also just come here and apply the mirror as a start. And after the subdivision surface modifier, I'm going to give it a solidify. And let's give it just a tiniest little bit of thickness like so. You can tab into edit mode and go control R, roll in an edge over here, control R, roll in an edge over here, just to kind of clean that up. And let's go back to frame one, hit the space bar. So now we have our little animation. What we're going to do is we're going to go over to our physics with our cloth and let's go down to the cache. And let's just go ahead and let's make this 90 frames. And let's go ahead and bake. And then we're gonna come over here. Let's start at frame seven or maybe even frame 10, just so our cloth um, doesn't start exactly where it's not fallen yet. So it's kind of already in a folded position and then it runs like so. And let's maybe make this 110 frames. I think that will give us just a little bit more to make up for the 10 frames we've lost. So that's looking really cool. Now at this point, you can go ahead, just like any other scene in Blender, and you can add in a camera. I'm gonna add in a basic camera like so. And you can get a position that you like. So I'm gonna go something like that. And then you can go to your render settings. Let's make it cycles and then make it GPU if you have one. And for the render, I'm just gonna go with 50 frames, but you can go higher if you want. Then it's a matter of going shift A, you can add in a nice area light. And let's go ahead, give that a strength of 200 and increase the size. And let's go ahead and duplicate that guy, like so, from two different sides. And now if you go Z and you go rendered, you can go control B and drag over the camera to limit the rendering to the camera. And you can also grab your floor and go G, Z and just move it up just to kind of close that gap that might be there like so. And now it's a matter of adding materials. Now you could do this however you want, but one thing you can do is you can go to the internet and you can type in something like ancient scroll, right? And once you've done that, you can go to your search image search, or you can even use, you know, like a dolly or whatever mid journey to generate something like this. And you're just going to find some text or some ancient looking map or something. I've already gone ahead and done that. So I'll leave that to you guys, whatever you want it to be. And with mine, I already have that on my desktop. So I'm going to select my scroll. I'm going to go create a new um, material. I'm going to go to the base color and go image texture, click open. And I have that image on my desktop. Then I'm just going to go to my UV editing and I'm going to come over here and come to the drop down to get that. In this case, it's just called ancient glyphs, but you guys can get whatever you want. Press A to select everything, go U and go unwrap. And then over here, you can kind of come and make it match by scaling it and rotating it. So over here, if you go Z and you go material preview, you should be able to see if you go back into object mode, your texture on here, which is looking really cool. And then the rest is just completely up to you. Um, for me, I went and just used a material that I already had. You guys can go ahead. There's a billion different resources on the internet for shaders and materials. There's a lot of people covering how to make them. So I'm just going to use one I already have. It's just a laminate floor. I'm going to go Z and go rendered. And that's looking really nice. And at this point, it really is up to you. You can grab these handles here. You can give them a material. I'm just going to make it kind of a bit darker like this. You can add a wood texture to them. It's completely up to you. I think um, you guys can definitely figure out how you want to shade this. But even something like this looks pretty good. 
And then another thing you can do is go Shift H to add in an empty. Then grab your camera and let's change the focal length to 120. And then zoom way back out like this. And now if you go to your depth of field, enable it and click on an eyedropper, you can select that empty and then bring down your f-stop. And now you've got this nice soft focus. And that's just looking really good. So let's go ahead and save and then go render and render the image. And here we have it guys. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial on making a squirrel in Blender. Go ahead, add your own textures, your own tech um, kind of style to it. Be creative and then share it on the community. I look forward to seeing what you guys are able to make and I'll be uploading my original to Patreon.